And now the engine is securely mounted on the stand and we're ready to start setting the timing. I'll focus a little bit on the variable valve, the VVTI portion of the timing on the 2JZ. This is what a lot of people get a little bit confused on. Uh, there are a little bit of differences, but not crazy difference. The procedure overall is very similar. However, because this VVTI gear does move back and forth 60 degrees on this engine, you have to be a little more careful when setting the belt on and then checking to see where the slack position is. Because if you have it back, you can actually set the belt on correctly timing wise. And when you start to turn the crankshaft on the engine, the slack in the gear will start to take up and the, the, the gear will move, actually move first before the camshaft starts to move. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. And what will happen on a engine, an aftermarket built race engine or something like that with big camshafts, big valves, uh, what will happen is when that timing event, if it doesn't come in just right because you have slacking gear, the two valves can actually kiss the tips of each other, which is not good. Um, Best case scenario, you might just scratch the valve a little bit. Worst case, you could bend a valve doing that. So that is something you have to pay extra careful attention to on a, um, a built head or something with, like I said, aftermarket stuff. On a stock head, uh, stock cams, stock valves, stock everything, you're probably not gonna have that issue too much because there's not enough lift on the, the factory camshafts to push the valves down to uh, actually contact each other. One more thing to note, when I said stock engine, I meant a stock 2JZ GTE. On GTE engines, there is the uh, the GT head gasket, obviously, which is thicker than the GE head gasket, and the, the thicker head gasket actually pushes the head and valves a little bit further away from the pistons. So on a 2JZ GTE engine, whether it's VVTI or non-VVTI, is non-interference. So you can actually, on a stock 2JZ GTE, free spin both camshafts and crankshaft, just whatever you want, nothing's gonna touch. There's not enough lift on the, the camshafts to push the valves to each other, and then the head gasket and the shape of the piston uh, moves the head high enough off the, the uh, contact point. So you can actually free spin all three on a GT engine and not have to worry about it. On a GE engine, on the GE VVTI engine, we have to be careful because the head, the head gasket is 0.3 millimeters versus GTE has a 1.3 millimeter. So that automatically brings the head one millimeter closer to the deck. So that in that case, the GE VVTI is a interference engine. So you do have to be careful. You're not just free spinning everything on a VVTI GE. Like I said, GTE doesn't really matter. And also, this is all referring to stock engines. Once you put upgraded camshafts, valves, uh, you change the compression height, uh, you change the head gasket thickness, all that stuff, then in that case, that engine is going to be an interference engine. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and I think that's about it. We're about ready to start doing the timing. These are the timing gears. They connect the crankshaft to the camshafts via the timing belt. If you look carefully, there are two different styles here. One is VVTI, the other is non-VVTI. The VVTI one has the 36-2, which means 36 minus two teeth missing. And the non-VVTI is the 12th tooth evenly spaced wheel. The VVTI gear is shared between the GTE and GE VVTI and the non-VVTI gear is the 12 tooth that's only for the GTE. The non-VVTI GE head does not have a crank pickup so that one's actually just a smooth wheel with no teeth. One more other issue with the GTE non-VVTI 12 tooth wheel. The back of it, the reluctor wheel is actually pressed on from the factory and these can loosen up over time so a common mod is to use a TIG welder to weld the reluctor wheel back onto the gear so it can't separate or get loose. Keep in mind on the VVTI timing gear, make sure there are no missing teeth on them. If there are any missing teeth from some drops or accidents or uh, improper removal, that will cause the car to run incorrectly. This is what happens when you free spin the camshafts. Under normal operating conditions, the valves open and close according to the timing events. If you remove the timing belt and free spin the cams, what can happen is 
valves can actually contact each other. This could cause damage or bend to the valve. On a stock camshaft engine, there's not enough lift for the valves to actually contact each other all the way out. So a free spin on a stock camshaft and stock valve engine will typically not result in any damage. I'll show you what I meant about the gear having slack. So if you watch closely, the gear here has 60 degrees back and forth movement. This allows the ECU to command the solenoid for the variable valve into here and it pressurizes the internal of the gear and then that allows the gear to advance as the ECU commands. So keep an eye on the camshaft here. If I pull the gear forward, if you observe the actual internal of the gear, the bolt securing the cam gear to the camshaft is fixed to the camshaft, but the gear itself, see it free spins. Okay, so I'll hold the gear stationary and I'll rotate the crank or the camshaft, I mean. See, it goes 60 before it actually catches the gear. So that's what you have to be careful of when you set the timer. And like I said, on a stock engine or a GTE, because there's not enough contact, you're okay to kind of just put the belt on however you want and put it in. But um, I'm going to go ahead and refer to the procedure in an aftermarket engine or a GE head or something where the uh, the valve contact clearance is more critical. Before we get any further, you need to go ahead and compress the hydraulic tensioner. You do this by putting it in a vise and compressing it very slowly. Don't go too fast or you could blow out the internal hydraulics. Ideally, we would probably use a new tensioner for a timing belt job, but in this demonstration video, we're just going to reuse the old one. I like to use a white paint pen to give the markings better visibility. One on the dot on the oil pump and one on the line on the timing gear. Here you want to set the crank to TDC, which is top dead center for piston number one. I'm going to go ahead and spin it 360 just to show you this is a non-interference engine, but just this specific engine. Here's maybe different. This is the mark you want to end up at at the end. Now we need to install the timing belt idler pulley. Make sure you put the spacer washer behind it in this order. Also remember to put some silicone on the threads as this can be a possible leak point from the oil pump. Now go ahead and torque everything to spec. All right, so with all the tips and technical details out of the way, we can go ahead and start the actual timing process. If you'll notice the timing gear on the crank, I bring back one tooth. This is to bring the piston down in the bore about a few millimeters. This will eliminate any chance of valve to piston contact. I'll do the same thing with the cam gears and bring them both back one tooth. After that, we'll go ahead and bring everything back to TDC slowly. If at any point in time you feel any dead stop or resistance, immediately stop what you're doing and then inspect for valve to piston contact. Also notice earlier, I turned the VBTI gear all the way clockwise. This is to take the slack out of the gear. So when the belt engages the timing gears, everything will move together instead of waiting 60 degrees for the timing belt to take up the slack inside of the gear. Watch the timing marks carefully. I'm going to install this belt performing a common mistake. If you notice, all the slack on the belt is on the right side. Once you turn the timing gear, you're already one tooth off time before the cam gears even start to move. So this is an old belt, so it's a little floppier than most, so I can exaggerate this effect. But on a brand new belt, this effect will still be there. To counter this, I'll pull the belt off and then actually bring the crank timing gear one tooth before the mark. That way when we put the belt back on, it will pull everything in line, including the slack out of the belt. Let's 
go ahead and wedge something in here to keep tension on the pulley so we can check if our timing is in sync. Go ahead and do a turn. And the first 360, the cam gear should be facing straight down. Second turn, 720 degrees, the cam gear should face straight up and line up exactly to the marks on the timing cover. Let's go ahead and verify the timing marks here and also on the cam gears to the notches. Once everything is good, we'll get ready to install the hydraulic tensioner. Install the bolts and then torque them to spec. Go ahead and pull the pin and then this will put the tension onto the pulley. Verify both sides have good tension. And then we'll do a final double check and verification of timing. Do a 720 degree rotation and make sure all marks still line up. Here's a close up of the timing cover. Do your two rotations, verify timing is correct. And once you're done, congratulations, you have finished the timing job successfully. If this guide has been helpful to you, please hit the subscribe button and like buttons to support our channel so we can bring you more content in the future. Thanks and good luck on your project.